Lesson 2 Death in a Sinful World Sabbath Afternoon October 1 When all the angels bowed to Jesus to acknowledge His supremacy and high authority and rightful rule, Lucifer bowed with them, but his heart was filled with envy and hatred. Christ had been taken into the special counsel of God in regard to his plans, while Lucifer was unacquainted with them. He did not understand, neither was he permitted to know, the purposes of God. But Christ was acknowledged sovereign of heaven, his power and authority to be the same as that of God himself. Lucifer thought that he was himself a favorite in heaven among the angels. He had been highly exalted, but this did not call forth from him gratitude and praise to his Creator. He aspired to the height of God himself. He gloried in his loftiness. He had been near the great Creator, and the ceaseless beams of glorious light enshrouding the eternal God had shone especially upon him. He thought how angels had obeyed his command with pleasurable alacrity. Were not his garments light and beautiful? Why should Christ thus be honored before himself? The Story of Redemption, page 14 In the midst of the garden, near the tree of life, stood the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree was especially designed of God to be the pledge of their obedience, faith, and love to him. Of this tree the Lord commanded our first parents not to eat, neither to touch it, lest they die. He told them that they might freely eat of all the trees in the garden except one, but if they ate of that tree, they should surely die. When Adam and Eve were placed in the beautiful garden, they had everything for their happiness which they could desire. But God chose, in His all-wise arrangements, to test their loyalty before they could be rendered eternally secure. They were to have His favor, and He was to converse with them and they with Him. Yet he did not place evil out of their reach. Satan was permitted to tempt them. If they endured the trial, they were to be in perpetual favor with God and the heavenly angels. The Story of Redemption, page 24 Sunday, October 2 Statements in Tension the angels warned Adam and Eve to be on their guard against the devices of Satan, for his efforts to ensnare them would be unwearied. While they were obedient to God, the evil one could not harm them, for, if need be, every angel in heaven would be sent to their help. If they steadfastly repelled his first insinuations, they would be as secure as the heavenly messengers. But should they once yield to temptation, their nature would become so depraved that in themselves they would have no power and no disposition to resist Satan. The angels had cautioned Eve to beware of separating herself from her husband while occupied in their daily labor in the garden. With him she would be in less danger from temptation than if she were alone. But absorbed in her pleasing task, she unconsciously wandered from his side. On perceiving that she was alone, she felt an apprehension of danger, but dismissed her fears, deciding that she had sufficient wisdom and strength to discern evil and to withstand it. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 53 Eve's curiosity was aroused. Instead of fleeing from the spot, she listened to hear a serpent talk. It did not occur to her mind that it might be that fallen foe using the serpent as a medium. It was Satan that spoke, not the serpent. Eve was beguiled, flattered, infatuated. Had she met a commanding personage, possessing a form like the angels and resembling them, she would have been upon her guard. But that strange voice should have driven her to her husband's side to inquire of him why another should thus freely address her but she entered into a controversy with the serpent. The Story of Redemption, page 33. 
It is expressly stated that Satan works in the children of disobedience, not merely having access to their minds, but working through their influence, conscious and unconscious, to draw others into the same disobedience. If evil angels have such power over the children of men in their disobedience, how much greater power the good angels have over those who are striving to be obedient. When we put our trust in Jesus Christ, working obedience unto righteousness, angels of God work in our hearts unto righteousness. The human family have all the help that Christ had in their conflicts with Satan. They need not be overcome. They may be more than conquerors through him who has loved them and given his life for them. Ye are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. And what a price! The Son of God in his humanity wrestled with the very same fierce, apparently overwhelming temptations that assail men. Everyone will be tempted, but the word declares that we shall not be tempted above our ability to bear. We may resist and defeat the wily foe. Selected Messages, Book 1, pages 94 and 95. Monday, October 3. Deceived by the Serpent. Holy angels often visited the garden and gave instruction to Adam and Eve concerning their employment and also taught them concerning the rebellion and fall of Satan. The angels warned them of Satan and cautioned them not to separate from each other in their employment, for they might be brought in contact with this fallen foe. The angels also enjoined upon them to follow closely the directions God had given them, for in perfect obedience only were they safe. Then this fallen foe could have no power over them. Satan commenced his work with Eve to cause her to disobey. She first erred in wandering from her husband, next in lingering around the forbidden tree, and next in listening to the voice of the tempter, and even daring to doubt what God had said. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. She thought that perhaps the Lord did not mean just what he said, and venturing, she put forth her hand, took of the fruit, and ate. It was pleasing to the eye and pleasant to the taste. Then she was jealous that God had withheld from them what was really for their good. Early Writings, page 147 Satan would convey the idea that by eating of the forbidden tree, Adam and Eve would receive a new and more noble kind of knowledge than they had hitherto attained. This has been his special work with great success ever since his fall, to lead men to pry into the secrets of the Almighty and not to be satisfied with what God has revealed and not careful to obey that which he has commanded. He would lead them to disobey God's commands and then make them believe that they are entering a wonderful field of knowledge. This is purely supposition and a miserable deception. They fail to understand what God has revealed and disregard His explicit commandments and aspire after wisdom independent of God and seek to understand that which He has been pleased to withhold from mortals. They are elated with their ideas of progression and charmed with their own vain philosophy, but grope in midnight darkness relative to true knowledge. They are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Story of Redemption, page 33. The knowledge which God did not want our first parents to have was a knowledge of guilt. And when they accepted the assertions of Satan— which were false, disobedience and transgression were introduced into our world. This disobedience to God's express command, this belief of Satan's lie, opened the floodgates of woe upon the world. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 562. Tuesday October 4. You will not die. 
Yielding to Satan's suggestions, our first parents opened the floodgates of evil upon the world. The questionable principles of the father and the mother of the human race influenced some of those with whom they associated. The evil that began in paradise has extended down through the ages. Although Adam and Eve related with sorrow to their children the sad story of the fall, their family became a divided family. Cain chose to serve Satan, Abel to serve God. Cain killed his brother Abel because he would not follow his example. The Upward Look, page 41. Modern spiritualism and the forms of ancient witchcraft and idol worship, all having communion with the dead as their vital principle, are founded upon the first lie by which Satan beguiled Eve in Eden. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods. Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Alike based upon falsehood and perpetuating the same, they are alike from the father of lies. The familiar spirits were not the spirits of the dead, but evil angels, the messengers of Satan. Ancient idolatry, which, as we have seen, comprises both worship of the dead and pretended communion with them, is declared by the Bible to have been demon worship. Modern spiritualism, resting upon the same foundation, is but a revival in a new form of the witchcraft and demon worship that God condemned and prohibited of old. God has in His Word opened before us the great events of the future, all that is essential for us to know, and He has given us a safe guide for our feet amid all its perils. But it is Satan's purpose to destroy men's confidence in God, to make them dissatisfied with their condition in life, and to lead them to seek a knowledge of what God has wisely veiled from them, and to despise what he has revealed in his holy word. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 685 and 686. Those who would stand in the time of peril must understand the testimony of the scriptures concerning the nature of man and the state of the dead, for in the near future many will be confronted by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appeal to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything and that they who thus appear are the spirits of devils. Little by little, Satan has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs. But it will be reached in the last remnant of time, and the world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. They are fast being lulled into a fatal security to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God. The Story of Redemption, pages 398 and 399. Wednesday October 5. Consequences of Sin The first great moral lesson given Adam was that of self-denial. The reins of self-government were placed in his hands. Judgment, reason, and conscience were to bear sway. Adam and Eve were permitted to partake of every tree in the garden save one. There was only a single prohibition— the forbidden tree was as attractive and lovely as any of the trees in the garden. It was called the tree of knowledge because in partaking of that tree, of which God had said, Thou shalt not eat of it, Genesis chapter 2 verse 17, they would have a knowledge of sin, an experience in disobedience. That I May Know Him, page 14. In humility and inexpressible sadness, Adam and Eve left the lovely garden wherein they had been so happy until they disobeyed the command of God. The atmosphere was changed, and it was no longer unvarying as before the transgression. God clothed them with coats of skins to protect them from the sense of chilliness and then of heat to which they are exposed. 
all heaven mourned on account of the disobedience and fall of Adam and Eve, which brought the wrath of God upon the whole human race. They were cut off from communing with God and were plunged in hopeless misery. The law of God could not be changed to meet man's necessity, for in God's arrangement it was never to lose its force or give up the smallest part of its claims. The Son of God pities fallen man. He knows that the law of his Father is as unchanging as himself. He can only see one way of escape for the transgressor. He offers himself to his Father as a sacrifice for man to take their guilt and punishment upon himself and redeem them from death by dying in their place and thus pay the ransom. For the sake of his dear Son, the Father forbears a while the execution of death, and to Christ he commits the fallen race. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, Page 46 the transgression of God's law brought woe and death in its train. Through disobedience, man's powers were perverted, and selfishness took the place of love. His nature became so weakened that it was impossible for him to resist the power of evil. And the tempter saw being fulfilled his purpose to thwart the divine plan of man's creation and fill the earth with misery and desolation. Men had chosen a ruler who chained them to his car as captives. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 33. Thursday, October 6. The First Gospel Promise Sorrow filled heaven as it was realized that man was lost and that the world which God had created was to be filled with mortals doomed to misery, sickness, and death, and there was no way of escape for the offender. The whole family of Adam must die. I saw the lovely Jesus and beheld an expression of sympathy and sorrow upon his countenance. Soon I saw him approach the exceeding bright light which enshrouded the Father, said my accompanying angel. He is in close converse with his Father. When he came from the Father, he then made known to the angelic host that a way of escape had been made for lost man. He told them that he had been pleading with his Father and had offered to give his life a ransom to take the sentence of death upon himself, that through him man might find pardon, that through the merits of his blood and obedience to the law of God, they could have the favor of God and be brought into the beautiful garden and eat of the fruit of the tree of life. Early Writings, page 149 In all the fullness of His divinity, in all the glory of His spotless humanity, Christ gave Himself for us as a full and free sacrifice, and each one who comes to Him should accept Him as if He were the only one for whom the price had been paid. As in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive, for the obedient will be raised to immortality, and the transgressor will rise from the dead to suffer death, the penalty of the law which he has broken. Many have taken the position that they cannot sin because they are sanctified, but this is a delusive snare of the evil one. There is constant danger of falling into sin, for Christ has warned us to watch and pray lest we enter into temptation. If we are conscious of the weakness of self, we shall not be self-confident and reckless of danger, but we shall feel the necessity of seeking to the source of our strength, Jesus, our righteousness. We shall come in repentance and contrition with a despairing sense of our own finite weakness and learn that we must daily apply to the merits of the blood of Christ that we may become vessels fit for the Master's use. While thus depending upon God, we shall not be found warring against the truth, but we shall always be enabled to take our stand for the right. We should cling to the teaching of the Bible and not follow the customs and traditions of the world, the sayings and doings of men. This Day with God, page 148. For further reading, Our High Calling, How to Maintain Your Integrity.
page 94. And education, the knowledge of good and evil, pages 23 to 27.